welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. There is a crazy blizzard raging away outside right now, and what else are you going to do on a snow day but build a snowman? <laughs> Today we've got a really cute little scrap project for you. We're going to make a little snowman applique out of whatever yarn you might have lying around. This little project is really cute if you want to add it to an existing thing like a blanket or a scarf or even a hat, or you could string a whole bunch of them together and make a cute little garland. <laughs> So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a little snowman applique together. In order to make a snowman applique, I'm using acrylic yarn. If you're making this for an existing project, be sure to use the same fiber for your applique as you did in your existing project. So if your blanket project, for example, was made out of cotton, you'd want to use cotton yarn for your applique. You need a very small amount of every color because this is a scrap project. You don't need any more than 20 grams of white yarn, about 5 to 10 grams of black yarn, a small amount of red, and a small amount of orange for its accents. This is all a medium size 4 worsted weight acrylic yarn. You need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook I'm using is a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, or a size 5 in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to click that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin with his head. So grab your white yarn. We're going to start with a cinch circle. And once you've chained one to secure your circle, chain two more. So you have a cinch circle with three chains coming out of it. This chain three counts as a double crochet. And now you're going to work 11 double crochets back into that little cinch circle. Be sure to work over top of your short tail so that you can cinch your circle shut when we're done. Once you have 11 double crochets in your cinch, cinch circle plus your chain three, that equals 12, grab your short tail, cinch your circle shut nice and tight. You're going to join with a cinch, slip knot, or I should say a slip stitch, to the top of that first chain three. And that, so far, is the beginning of the head. We're going to do one more row for the head. We're going to chain three. I'm going to work over my short tail. Double crochet into the same stitch as joining. So if you pull up on your chain three, you can sort of see that little space there double crochet right in there. And now you're going to work two double crochet into each stitch all the way around. After you've worked two double crochet into each stitch all the way around, you'll be left with this little thing, which is commonly referred to as the false stitch. We're going to work one double crochet into the bottom of that. It's also the bottom of the chain three that began the row. We're going to skip over top of the chain three and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet. So that will just push your chain three to the back. We're not counting it as a stitch and you should have 24 stitches all the way around and a nice neat closed circle. Leave yourself a long tail, snip your yarn and fasten off. You're going to do exactly the same thing here to begin the body. So begin, work the first two rows of the head exactly as we just did, and I'll catch up with you at the end of row two to begin row three. Once you've gotten to the end of row two, just like we did for the head, so we're made of pretty much exactly the same thing, we're going to work one more row to make the body a bit bigger. So after you've joined with a slip stitch to the top of the real double crochet, chain three to begin, Double crochet in the same stitch as joining. Double crochet into the next stitch just once. And now we're going to work a new little repeater pattern for the rest of row three. Two double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet once into the stitch after that. So that's what you're going to do all the way around. Two double crochet, one double crochet. Two double crochet, one double crochet. And I'll catch up with you at the end of row three. When you get to the end of row three, including your chain three, you'll have 36 stitches. But we want to do that little cheat again. 
So find the false stitch, that little stitch that's at the bottom of the chain three, double crochet once into the bottom of it, skip over top of the chain three and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet. That pushes the chain three to the back. You still have 36 stitches all the way around in a nice closed neat circle. You can snip your yarn, you don't need very much here. Fasten off and take a moment to weave in that little short tail across the back underneath some of those stitches. Next, let's make his top hat. We're going to take our black yarn, we're going to start with a slip knot, and you're going to try and leave yourself a nice long tail at the beginning of this little piece rather than the end. So a nice long tail, you're going to use that to do a little bit of sewing. In fact, I might even make it longer than that. Try to leave yourselves around ooh, between 15 and centimeters, 15 and 17 centimeters, or six and seven inches of tail. That should be enough. Then we're going to chain nine. Once you have nine chains, and I know this is a little difficult to see, but you can see it on your own work. You want to skip over the first chain, find the second one, and single crochet into it. You're going to single crochet into each of those eight chains all the way back. So the ninth chain of your foundation chain row is a turning chain. You're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook, single crochet into each of the chains that are left. You'll have eight stitches at the end of row one. At the end of row one, you'll have eight stitches. We're going to chain one and turn our work. And we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch. So just a slip stitch. Try not to make it very tight. We're going to slip stitch into the second stitch. Chain one and single crochet in the same place. So you're slip stitching, chaining one and single crocheting all into that second stitch of the second row single crochet into each of the next five stitches and that will leave you with one stitch left in the row. You're not going to do anything to it. You're just going to ignore it. At the end of row two you'll have six single crochet stitches and these little bits from row one that sort of stick out on the end. So we're just going to focus on those six stitches in the middle of the hat from here on out. For rows three through rows six, so the next four rows, you're just going to chain one and turn at the end of every row and single crochet back across those six stitches. So each rows three, so rows two, three, four, five, and six will all have six stitches in it. You just chain one and turn when you get to the end of the row and single crochet all the way back. And I'll see you at the end of row six. At the end of row six, you can just snip your yarn. You don't need very much tail. Fasten off and take a moment to weave this short tail up here in, back and forth across some of the stitches on the back of the hat, but leave that long tail that we started with free. We're going to use that to sew the hat to the snowman when we're done. Now let's make our snowman a little tiny carrot nose. So grab your orange yarn. We're going to begin with a slip knot. We're going to chain three. Once you have a chain of three, you're going to skip over top of the first chain, find the second chain and slip stitch into it. So try not to make it too tight. And then you're going to single crochet into the last chain. That's it. That's all you need to do. You can snip your yarn. You don't need too much yarn, but you are going to do a little bit of sewing with it. Fasten off and leave both of those tails open and available. You can just put your little nose to the side for now. Now we can make him a scarf. I'm using red for my scarf, but of course you can use any color you want for the scarf on your snowman. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And we're going to chain 21 to begin. 21 chains. Once you have 21 chains, you're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the second one, and half double crochet into it. 
you're going to half double crochet into each chain all the way back across and you'll have 20 stitches at the end of row one. When you've finished half double crocheting in each chain all the way back, you'll have 20 half double crochet stitches. Leave yourself a nice long chain or a long sort of length of yarn, I should say. Fasten off and take a moment to weave your short tail in back and forth across some of the stitches along the back of your little scarf. Now let's put all of our pieces together. We're going to take our head and our body pieces first. So grab your body, take your head, you can thread up the long tail left behind on your head in your yarn needle, and you're going to position your head just overlapping the top of the body of our snowman. And all we're going to do to sew it down is just go back and forth using a little running stitch, back and forth through each of the stitches, all the way up one side, and then we're going to go all the way back. And stitch up the other side. When you get to this end over here, you can double back and I'll meet you back at the middle. When you've sewn all the way back out and back to the middle, take your yarn, bring it through to the back, flip your snowman over, you can make a small knot on the back of your snowman, And then take a moment to weave that little tail in back and forth underneath some of the stitches along the back of your snowman. Now we're going to do the same thing with this hat. So grab the hat, thread up that long tail with your yarn needle. You're going to take your hat and position it by overlapping the top part of the head of your snowman. Now you can sort of sit it to one side or the other or straight across, it's entirely up to you. What you want to do is essentially exactly what we did with the hat. You're going to sew back and forth using a running stitch going through every single stitch along the bottom edge of the hat all the way out the back of your snowman and when you get to the end of the hat you're going to turn around and sew backwards again. I've turned it over so you can see what I'm doing across the back. So I've worked a running stitch all the way from one edge of the hat out to the other. And now I'm going to turn it over and I'm just going to work some stitches across the front of the hat all the way again back through the top of the head of the snowman. But I'm working across the top of some of the stitches of the snowman just so I can make sure that the hat stays in place up against the edge of the head. Once you've sewn all the way back across the top edge of the head, all the way through the hat, so that your hat isn't going to go anywhere, it's on there nice and sturdy, you can make a little knot somewhere on the back of your snowman, and then just take a moment to weave that tail back and forth in through some of those black stitches, and it'll totally disappear. Next we're going to add his little nose. So take your nose and your snowman, hold your nose with the little point facing down so that it covers the very center of the head of your snowman. We're going to take our yarn needle and with the longer of your two strands you're going to just sew back and forth through the head of your snowman to attach just the top part of your nose. It, the rest of it can sort of hang out and uh, wiggle around a little bit. Gives it a bit of 3D interest. So you're just going to sew very gently across the top of your nose piece. Then you're going to take the other piece of tail that you've got here, so the other little short tail left on your nose, pull it to the back as well, so your little nose sticks out like that, and then you can knot both of these ends together and trim any excess. 
I like to knot everything at least twice. If you're using a slipper yarn, I recommend three times, just so it doesn't come undone. Now we're going to add a scarf. Thread up the long tail left behind on your scarf in your yarn needle. Grab your snowman, and you're going to take the end of your scarf with the long tail on it and position it right on the edge so that it's going to overlap sort of the chin of your snowman. So right where the two circles overlap, you're going to sew the edge of your scarf onto the edge of your snowman. And then you're just going to lay your scarf over top of the chin of your snowman so that it covers that area where the two circles meet. And if you need to pin it down, you can. Otherwise, just hold it in place. And you can just work back and forth, front to back, through the stitches, making sure that you go over top of each stitch in the scarf, front to back, all the way through your fabric and you're going to work all the way that way and then if you have enough yarn left over and you should you can turn around and work all the way back across the other side you're going to leave this part of your your little scarf hanging in the breeze so it looks like it's fluttering away on them on a very blustery windy day once you've sewn all the way across one way and then up and back over the other leaving this little part of your scarf to blow around in the breeze, <laughs> you can knot your yarn on the back of your snowman and weave in the tail or trim any excess. Next, we're going to add some French knots for some eyes, a little mouth, and some buttons down his front. We're going to take a long length of black yarn, thread it up in your yarn needle, and bring your needle from back to front on one side of his nose, right about where you'd like an eye to sit. Don't bring your yarn all the way through, leave some on the back so that you can knot it later. Then you're going to try and keep your, or your needle pressed up against the fabric of your snowman while you take the yarn and you wrap it five times at least around your needle. Be a little bit tricky. Then, holding it down, you're going to pull your needle all the way through. Let's not catch up his scarf here. And that creates a little knot. You can pull on the thread at the back of your snowman. And then take your needle and go back down. Maybe hop over top of a loop on a stitch just so you've got something to grab back down to the back and there's a little French knot made for his eye. You can skip across to the other side of his nose and do the same thing. Bring your yarn all the way out. Remember that you've got that little tail on the back that you're going to use later for knotting. Try to hold your needle as close to the fabric as possible. I like to pinch the fabric and the needle together between my finger and my thumb. Wrap the yarn at least five times around the needle. Hold it against the needle and then pull the needle all the way through. It creates a nice neat little knot. I'm going to hop down over top of another stitch through to the back. And there's this other little eye. They look like little lumps of coal. You can do the same thing and add, say, five of them all the way around the bottom of his face and a bit of a smile. And you can add three more down here. I would use, if you don't have enough yarn left over, I would just knot these two ends together. This is the eyes. And then trim what's left. Cut yourself a new length of black yarn and start all over again for the, the smiley little mouth pieces. Do the same thing, knot the ends on the back, trim the excess, and then cut a third length and do his buttons down his front. And once you've finished all of your little French knots, your snowman is all done. 
You can vary the size of your French knots by varying the number of wraps of yarn you put around your needle. So for example, in all of the facial knots, I wrapped the yarn five times around the needle before I pulled the needle through. But for a larger button, for example, you might want to use six or even seven wraps of yarn around your needle. That will give you sort of an elongated bit of a knot, just like that there. And of course you can make the knot smaller by only wrapping your yarn three or four times around your needle. Something to keep in mind if you want to use French knots for other decorating purposes down the road. And that is our little snowman applique, all ready for the winter. <laughs> and there you go, one cute little snowman made from scraps, the perfect little project to occupy yourself with on a blustery cold wintry, blizzardy day. <laughs> I hope you had fun making this along with us today, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week, everybody! <laughs>